The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to Capernaum with his followers, and on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. So I was thinking this morning that our character in our first reading, Hannah, I think she's a Holy Family Academy student. Is there anybody named Hannah in the student body? There is one today. Hannah is in the midst of classic spiritual desolation. And if you don't understand what that term means, if you are a Holy Family student, you are very clear on that during exam week, aren't you? And out of the five subjects you're studying for to take an exam, maybe six, okay, out of these subjects, there's probably one of them that you're like, I'm never going to make it. I'm doomed. There you are. You're in desolation. And so, here's Hannah, and she's in the temple. And you can see she's in great pain and great anxiety. And yet, it feels like God is not there. And that's not just for Holy Family students. That is a moment in time we all enter into, and perhaps sometimes more often than we'd like to talk about. Where is he? However, in this mode of desolation, where it feels like there's no blessings in life, Hannah gives the proper response. In the midst of her desolation, she goes to the temple and even prays in bitterness. She's got an attitude, but you can, it's, it's her emotions. And she's wondering where God is and she's in sorrow and misery. The scriptures tell us, but yet she goes before the Lord just the same. It's actually a great act of trust. And that's where we begin to climb out of the pit of desolation. We trust. We trust God. And so that's what she does. And not only does she trust God, but she encounters someone who gives her just a little bit of help. This prophet, Eli. And basically, all he says is, God bless you. And that's enough for her. And she responds by taking some time with her husband and coming back to the temple with her husband to worship. This tells you something else about desolation. We need help sometimes in desolation. We need to find somebody who can help us. It happens in two places here for Hannah. First, the prophet Eli helps her. He first misunderstands her, 
And that, that also is what happens in desolation. People don't understand the pain you're in, and they don't take you seriously. That's, that's salt in the wound. And at first, this is Eli's reaction, but he wishes her blessing, and she goes home, and her husband cares for her. It's family. It's community. And they go together to worship. They pray together. Imagine a husband and wife praying. You adults, are you hearing this? Take authority, gentlemen, and start praying with your wife. It'll make your marriage much better all around. Happy life, happy prayer life with my wife. Yes, I just made that up. That's pretty good. So Hannah goes to the temple with her husband, and he worships with her. It's, they're, they're facing the same direction now in the midst of the desolation. And the direction is we're both going to hold hands and look at God. That's the only place we can go here. And her prayers are heard and they're answered. What does this whole scene of desolation do for her? It actually increases her faith and it's counterintuitive. It seems like such a bad thing, but it raises her from a bad place to a place that's actually closer to God. She learns to go to him. She trusts in God's authority that he's going to take her through this. In the gospel, you see all these people, they can't believe the amount of authority Jesus has. He even casts out evil spirits. In the Jewish, this, this is a, an act of exorcism, by the way. Okay? And so in the Jewish culture, they had exorcists. And exorcists said, long forever taking prayers. And, some, and most of the time, not, not much happened. And the people in the, in the synagogue, they know about this. And so here Jesus comes and with a couple of words, the demon's gone. They're amazed. It's amazing how quickly they would forget the power and authority that Jesus has. And that's also one of the things that happens in the midst of desolation. When we're in our funk, we forget how powerful God is. In this passage here, Hannah remembers and she turns to him. And this is what we do when we enter into the desolation that happens eventually. We remember who has the power and who has the authority to turn things around. And usually it's not about turning the situation around. It's usually about turning around our heart to be more seriously focused on Christ who's seriously in love with us. Regina Jenny, Letterre, Alleluia, Quia, Quia.